Hello and welcome to a new video about simple electric circuits. We are talking about a way to simplify things, to replace things again with something else. Last time we replaced a lot of things with a voltage source and now we are replacing a lot of things with a current source. Last time it was called De Venner theory, this time it's Norton theory. It is, uh, was found by Edward Norton. <laughs> Not the actor, not not the Incredible Hulk, uh, Edward Norton. Uh, it's it's uh, Edward Laurie Norton, uh, living way before Edward Norton, the actor. Well, actually, it's the same name. So we're talking about Norton's theorem here. Uh, that Norton is postulating that all linear things. Uh, can be replaced by a current source. And we have to determine how big is UI and how big is the source current, UIS in this, in this case I've named it. And there's also a recipe. And the first step of the recipe is even the same when we think about uh, the Devenant theorem. Yeah? First time, uh, the first thing was to calculate RI by setting all sources to zero. Exactly the same way, exactly the same way. So a zero voltage source, we said, is replaced. This is a zero voltage source. Here we have 100 ohms. Here we have 200 ohms. Here we have 300 ohms. And now, those two things are parallel. So I'm going to replace this with a resistance. This is 1 divided by 1 divided by 100 ohms plus 1 divided by 200 ohms. And this equals. 1 divided by 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 200 66.6 .6 periodic ohms and here this is the same this is 300 and now we have series connection so we have only one resistor and this is 300 ohms plus 66.6 .6 periodic ohms and this is 366.6 .6 periodic ohms and this is Ri. Here Ri already determined. Mm -hmm. So this is working exactly the same way as in the Venner uh, version and then Second, second point, calculate the short circuit current. So what we do actually is we have those, we have this 100 ohms. Two hundred ohms, three hundred ohms, and here we whoop, short circuit. And here we have the short circuit value. And here we have our thirty volts. We only have to calculate this. Those two things are. Here I am parallel. So actually, we are going to replace those two things. We have here 100 ohms. And now those two things are replaced by 
one resistor and this one resistor is one divided by one divided by 200 ohms plus one divided by 300 ohms and this is I can simply reduce this here 300 back 120 ohms here we have Thirty volts. So actually, we have here thirty volts, and here those two are now series. This is one hundred ohms plus one hundred twenty ohms at two hundred twenty ohms, right? Here we have. 30 volt. So here we have 30 volt as well. And here I will draw in a current. I call it Ix. And this Ix is now uh, 30 volts divided by 220 ohms. And this equals 30 divided by 220 equals OK. 0 0.13636 amps. Why is this Ix here? Here is this Ix. Here is Ix as well. Here I have a voltage, Ux. And this Ux equals Ix multiplied by 120 ohm. So this is 0 0.13636 amps multiplied by 120 ohm equals multiplied by 120 equals 16.36 volts. Here we have Ux. So from here to here we also have Ux. It's the same Ux. Huh? So we have here Is equals Ux divided by 300 ohms. And this is 16.36 volts divided by 300 ohms. And this is... Fifty five dot actually it's fifty five forty fifty five fifty four divided by five point fifty five. You know what I'd rather say, right? Milliamps. Huh? If we're using this IS and this RI, it's behaving exactly like this. Hmm? See, it's working pretty much the same. The only the only difference is that we calculate the short circuit current and not the open voltage, the open, the open circuit voltage. And of course we can also transform a current source to a current source. Let's try this yeah, and follow exactly those steps again. So first step is calculate Ri. By setting all sources to zero. And a current source with a source current of zero is an open, is open. So we have here 100 ohms. We can immediately forget this because a, a resistor where no res where no current is running through can does not doesn't count. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So the only thing we have is here the series connection. This is acting as a series connection because here there's no current. Yeah? So this is, has no effect at all, this 100 ohms. So actually we have here A and here B. And here we have just 300 ohms plus 200 ohms is 500 ohms. And this is already Ri. This was quick, right? This was quick. Yeah, and now we have to to calculate a uh, second step. Calculate the short circuit current. So let's see, draw this, we have here 100 ohms, we have here 200 ohms, we have here 300 ohms, we have here the short circuit, the clamps are connected to each other, that's it. Yeah. And we want to know here IS. This is what we know. And here we know, here we have I0, we have 100 milliamps. Now we can immediately calculate this here. U1. U1 is R1 multiplied by I0. Yeah. And this is 100 ohms multiplied by 0 0.1 amps, and this is 10 volts. Here we have 10 volts. All right? Those two we also have already calculated. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure why I did this, but okay. We can we can calculate it. So those two, yeah, it's pretty much the same like here. Yeah? So we have here also current source. We have here our 100 ohms. We have here the replacement. And this replacement is 1 divided by 1 divided by 200 ohms plus 1 divided by 300 ohms. And this was 120 ohms. Don't go into calculate this again. And of course, we have here uh, <laughs> this 100 milliamps. So we can calculate here ux. Yeah. And ux equals uh, 120 ohms multiplied by 100 milliamps, and this is 12 volts. Huh? And we have here ux, we have here ux, and we have here 300 volts. So actually, what we have is is equals uh, ux divided by 300 ohm, this is 12 volt, divided by 300 ohm, and this is 440, 40 milli, right? 12 divided by 312, <laughs> not 12, 40 milliamps, 0 0.04 amps, it's 40 milliamps. This was fast, right? Last time it was also faster to calculate with the current source. So current sources, even if they are unusual, are not a bad thing per se. All right, so that's Norton's theorem. You can replace every circuit, linear circuit, with one real 
current source. And this is how you do it. Follow those two steps. What shall happen if there are more than one source inside? There are two voltage sources, two current sources, or even mixed. What to do then? Then we are using a superposition thing. What this means and how this is working, I'm going to explain in next video. Next video is superposition of different sources, power sources. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.